Photography is one of my all-time favorite hobbies. The pursuit of the perfect ray of light to capture a single moment in time always makes photography fun and exciting. While digital photography is wildly more popular and undoubtedly more efficient, exploring different mediums of photography is all part of the experience. If you love photography, you should definitely try your hand at shooting and developing film. Personally, I shoot with a Leica M6 and a Zeiss 35mm f2.8, but good film cameras can be had for well under $100 and can use the exact same film. When it comes to the film itself, I go between a colored film Portra 400 and a black and white film Ilford HP5. Since Portra is daylight balance, it is what I will be shooting today. After you have made it to the end of a roll, you can finally develop your film. Don't stress, developing film has room for error and the process does not need to be overly precise. For developing film, I use the Labbox developing tank. I prefer this development tank over others because you don't need a separate light sealed bag and you don't need to handle the film blindly. To load the tank you'll need a film leader retriever. Insert the retriever and pull out the film, then cut the tail of the film. Slide the cut film underneath the guide bars and attach the clip to the end of the film. Place the lid on top of the tank and turn the knob to load the film onto the internal reel. Once the knob can no longer be turned, push the button on the back of the box to cut the film. The internal reel should now spin freely. To develop color film, we will be using C41 chemicals. Most C41 chemistry will come in a concentrated form that you dilute and mix yourself as I have done here in these amber glass bottles. Color film requires a developer, Blix, and a fixer. Start by heating the developer and Blix to 105 degrees Fahrenheit, or for everyone else in the world, 40 degrees Celsius. You can either run the chemicals under hot water or use an immersion cooker to make the process a little easier. The temperature does not need to be exact and I have successfully developed film using chemicals at plus or minus a few degrees of the recommended temperatures. Once the chemicals reach temp, we can begin developing. Start with your developer. One downside to the lab box is there is no indicator to let you know how much liquid is in the chamber. To avoid any spills, I will use a separate measuring cup to measure out 500 milliliters of developer. Pour the developer into the tank, then set a timer for three and a half minutes.
agitate the film continuously for the first 10 seconds. Then, at the 3 minute mark, agitate for 4 seconds and every 30 second interval after that. After three and a half minutes have elapsed, pour your developer back into the container. Now measure out 500 milliliters of Blix and add it to your developing tank. Set a timer for 8 minutes, then again agitate continuously for 10 seconds. At the 7 minute and 30 second mark, agitate for 4 seconds and again every 30 second interval after that. After 8 minutes have elapsed, pour your Blix back into its container. After the Blix step, your film is now light safe and you can remove the lid from your developing tank. For the lab box, I'll remove the film cassette holder from the tank then bring the developing chamber over to the sink. Wash your film by running cool water over it for 3 minutes. After 3 minutes, pour out any remaining water. Now add in your fixer. Agitate for 30 seconds, then let it sit for another 30 seconds. After fixing your film, the film is now safe to handle. Using some hangers with clips, clip your film to the hanger and slowly unravel your film. Hang the film in a cool dry place and also add a second clip to the bottom to add some weight and ensure the film dries flat. Let the film dry for a couple of hours or just let it hang overnight. The following day I will scan my photos. Since scanning isn't the quickest process, it is best to do this with a cup of coffee. For scanning, I use the Epson V600. The scanner has a dedicated film holder and scanning software that makes scanning simple. Start by placing your film in the film holder. Then start up Epson Scan 2. For scan settings, I use the following. Mode, Photo Mode, Document Settings, Transparency, Document Type, Color Negative Film, Image Type, 48-Bit Color, Resolution, 2400 DPI, Scan Quality, High.
For advanced settings, I'll turn on digital ice technology, which will remove small imperfections like dust, hair, and small scratches from the film. Now click preview. Preview will do a quick scan and give you a low res mockup of what the final scan will look like. Once the preview scan has finished, I'll start by orienting the pictures correctly. Then I'll adjust exposure by using the histogram. To adjust exposure, I'll start with the highlights. I'll adjust the highlights to bring back any detail in particularly bright spots of a photo. Then I'll do the same with the shadows, paying attention to darker parts of the image and making sure to bring back any detail that was lost. Finally, I'll adjust the midpoint till I'm happy with the overall exposure. The last thing I'll touch is the color balance. This is all personal taste here, but usually I'll try to white balance the picture back to how I remember it. Once you are happy with your edits, you can go ahead and click scan. Here are the final developed, scanned, and edited photos that I got in and around San Jose State University.